Hello, Neverwinter. Um, as a favor to our Kingdom Regent, uh, Lady Rowana, uh, I'm going to do a series of classes online for y'all. Um, not sure what all I'm going to do. I'm going to do various things. Probably get, I mean, There's going to be some metal work and stuff. I know I get known for my blacksmithing work a lot, but I do a lot of other things too. Um, today, I'm actually going to teach you how to make a traditional black leather dye called Vinegar Rune or Vinegar Black. It's a very useful leather dye. Uh, it, like I say, it is traditional. It's something that's been used for a long time. But it's something you can make at home. It's something you can go to your grocery store and buy everything you need to make this. Uh, one trip to Walmart, less than 10 bucks, and you'll have everything to make this leather dye. And not just a little, but like a lot of it. And it's a leather dye that won't wear off, doesn't rub off onto anything or transfer anything uh, to your clothing or anything. So it's a very good leather dye. And I'll say, I, I love it. Uh, I will say, you know, if you're sensitive to anything like acids or bases or anything, wear gloves when you're making this, uh, just so you keep the vinegar off of you because it is an acid, it's acetic acid. Uh, even though, like I say, most people encounter vinegar when they eat pickles and they don't have any issues. Uh, uh, do this outside for ventilation purposes because vinegar uh, gets really strong when you boil it. The fumes off of it are a little harsh. Um, I'm going to post a picture. Uh, there will be a picture in the video right after this that shows you the, uh, two, the only two ingredients you need to make this black leather dye. Okay, so now our vinegar is starting to boil, so we're going to turn down, oh, down, sorry, wrong way, we're going to turn down the fire. We want this to simmer and not be a really hard boil because it'll evaporate the acetic acid too much. What we want to do is we want the heat to speed up the chemical reaction. And that chemical reaction is the acetic acid stripping off those iron molecules and making the ferric acetate, which I'm going to show you how that does with the leather. You're gonna have to kind of keep pushing your uh, steel wool back down because it's gonna float a little bit, but it's gonna be bubbling. The bubbling is from boiling, but also there's a chemical reaction that's causing that to bubble as well. <coughs> oh, I highly recommend to do this outside because uh, if you do not enjoy the smell of vinegar, you're gonna enjoy it even less when you boil it. Turn that down a little. Low simmer. There we go. Okay, while our vinegar and steel wool is cooking away, we're going to prepare another solution. We have just plain water in our fancy chock full of nuts serving ware, and we're going to get some baking soda. We're going to want to make a nice strong baking soda solution. Uh, if you know anything you learned in science class, you're going to have an acid and a base. You mix them together you get a nice fizzy thing going on that's because they're neutralizing each other we need this to neutralize the acid after we soak the leather in it later so the acid doesn't sit there and do nasty stuff to our leather so we're going to go ahead and let this dissolve really good while our acid solution is cooking away okay so this has been cooking probably for about 10 15 minutes and i'm going to do a test with a piece of uh non-dyed leather really quick Set it on there and poke it down with a stick. Right. And that fast. It went from brown to black. Um, so this has a little bit more tannins in it than my normal leather for a tool and leather. So I'm gonna actually let this cook a little bit longer. But I mean, that's exactly what we're looking for. A nice solid black. Um, the way the way that this dye works is it doesn't coat the outside and color the outside. This dye reacts with the tannins in the leather. Uh, the tannins come from uh, tannic acid, which is used for the process. That's where the name comes from for tanned leather. And it reacts with the, tannic, uh, the tannins in the leather from the tannin process, and it transforms the actual leather to black. If I were to cut this open, which I might in just a minute, uh, it'll be black all the way through. This will never wear off, rub off, or be anything other than black. Might get a little gray from where it's ashy, but you hit it with some saddle soap and moisten it back up and it's going to be black again. Oh, here we go. Uh, what's cool about this solution is it, it's not black. Um, it's fairly clear, off-colored, stain brown, depending on what. Uh, impurities might come out whenever you're boiling the uh, 
vinegar and the steel wool down. But you can take a piece of leather and dip it in this mostly clear solution and it's gonna come out black. Now you see this doesn't have as much tannin as the other piece. So this one's actually gonna, it'll take a little bit for that to develop, but once that dries, that's gonna dry and develop on into a solid black color. You can see it right in front of the camera now. It's getting darker by the second. That's what's really cool about this process. It actually transforms the internal structure of the leather to it being black all the way through. All right, so this has been a few minutes. Uh, already sat there and let it, I let it dry for a few minutes and it further developed the black color. And you can see that is very black. And I just pulled it out of a neutralizing bath of the baking soda water and let that continue to dry out. And I just dropped a felt blank in there. And this is less than a minute and that is already blackened up very well. I'm gonna let it soak for another minute or two and then I'm gonna drop that into this baking soda bath to neutralize that acid. That way the acid doesn't cause any weakening of the leather or anything like that. Uh, and then we'll hang it out to dry and then come back and we'll do the rest of the work after a day or two. Um, I will tell you that this does leave a vinegar smell on the leather, which will neutralize after a couple days and die down. But like I say, this black is the best black to me because, oh, let me carry this to the work table. All right, so, all right, bear with me. I'm gonna set the camera down while I take a knife and cut this and show you what the inside structure looks like. Okay, so there you have an inside cut of the leather and you look and see that you can see just a little bit of brown in there and that's where this was just dipped in there for just a few seconds and not let soak but you can see that it is black all the way through it is a true black leather now so anyway that's uh, how to make vinegar rune and use it to dye leather black i hope you find that useful i know i sure do and this is a very traditional black leather dye as well uh, this is something that actually has been used for a long time now of course they didn't have steel wool back in back in the days when they first started using it, it would have been cast iron or iron ingots or whatever. <clears throat> but uh, steel wool is just a readily available source for you to make it. And it's fairly cheap, fairly easy to make this. I mean, you think you got less than $2 in a gallon of vinegar and you probably got like three or four bucks in a pack of steel wool and you can make enough vinegar room to sit there and dye several things. Uh, so anyway, like I say, it's, it's historical, it's neat, it's something you can make at home cheaply and it gets you this very beautiful, very black of blacks. Anyway, I hope y'all found this educational. All right, so that's finished up. Uh, you can see that is very extremely black and it still needs to dry. I'm gonna hang it up and let it dry for a couple of days and then I can come back and do some tooling work to it. Uh, this one will just probably get a simple strap down the side or something like that. It's just gonna be a black belt. But anyway, uh, that's how you can turn your leather black if you want to. Anyway, uh, take care guys. Peace out. I hope you uh, learned something today.